Welcome back to the Darting Through the Faith podcast. I'm Father Sean Wilson. She's Julia Monin, and this is the Darting Through the Faith podcast, as I already mentioned. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Two times, just right. in case you missed it the first. Yeah. It's like subliminal messaging. Oh, is it? Yeah. Darting Through the Faith, Darting Through the Faith. See yeah. how many times we can say it this episode. Say what? Darting Through the Faith. Oh. <laughs> ah, it's the fourth week of Advent. Tis. He is so near. Yeah. Mm. can almost sense it. Mm, I can. I can. I can. We well, can. He is I know. so near. I know. Fourth Sunday or fourth. No, it's not. It's Monday now, but fourth week of Advent. That's has right. it been a fruitful Advent for you? It has been. Actually, somebody just asked me this yesterday. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And described it's been an invasive Advent. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Like, like the Lord's been invasive in your soul and yeah. you yourself. Ooh. Yeah. That's good. It's, it's hurt a little oh. bit, but it's like, ah. Even better. <laughs> oh, that's good. You know, he's really doing some healing when that's going I know, on. I know. But it does hurt. It's I am It's like sorry scabbing to hear that. over, you know? Mm-hmm. And sometimes you pick the scab and you're like, oh. Mm. <laughs> that's probably where the analogy falls apart. Yeah, right, right. Oh, but that is good stuff. It is. That's it is. Good stuff. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he's making his presence known in my life too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People keep saying, Are you ready for Christmas? And I'm as ready as I should be for the third week of Advent. Or I'm as ready as I should be for the fourth week of Advent. Like, I mean, you can always go back and dissect and think I could have done more. By the way, that'll be us at the end of our lives, won't it? Yeah. I think so. I think no matter what you've done for the Lord, no matter how many sacrifices you've taken on, no matter. I mean, you could die a brutal death for the Lord, mm-hmm. like so many of the martyrs did, and you'd still, on your last breath, say, "I could have, I could have given him more." Anyway, that's what this Advent has been. Yeah, <laughs> I could have given him more. You know where that's like so beautifully depicted in in film? Tell you've, me. You've seen the movie Schindler's List? Yeah, but it's been yeah. a long time. So the guy uh, Oscar Schindler, oh, yeah. you know, it's a story. It's a true, based on a mm-hmm. true story of he was a uh, he was not a Jewish man, but during the the Nazi Holocaust and all mm-hmm. of that, he he basically put Jews to work so that they wouldn't get deported to concentration mm-hmm. camps. You know, basically, uh, you know, basically had to make deals with people to like get more workers mm-hmm. and to you know create these jobs mm-hmm. just so that people wouldn't have to die. Mm-hmm. And um, and when the the Allies come and liberate Nazi Germany, you know. It, all of his workers are so grateful and he looks around at all of them and he's like, Oh my gosh, I could have done more. Mm -hmm. It's just like the end scene is, I just realized I just gave away the movie, but it's still a powerful movie. Mm -hmm. Like it's a beautiful movie. Liam Neeson is Mm -hmm. Mr. Shinley. Actually, I, I remember very little of that, but there are, now that you say that, like I have a couple scenes from that movie that are like, things you don't forget like yeah. so powerful but the ending oh my I am gosh. remembering that it is I like, I'm in it. like chills yeah yeah but like him coming to that realization of this could have gone to or right and everybody's coming up to him like oh my gosh you did yeah. so much thank you for saving me and blood but he's like oh my gosh yeah I could have did I need this car did I need mm-hmm. this and he, I could have done more isn't there a moment where he like looks down at his watch yep and like oh I could yeah. have given that too yep oh yeah that so. yeah that sense with our whole lives with our whole lives but- Mm. alas right well the lord takes what he takes and we give whatever he wants and that's what it is that's what it is okay that was yeah. really profound yeah yeah it was, i think that should be added yes the, the lord for. takes what he wants and it, i don't even know what it was something somebody will go back and watch it <laughs> not be me but anyway but it's been a fruitful lent and i'm starting to like feel the anticipate like letting myself get excited now that christmas is almost here yeah i don't want to get excited too early you can't until like the liturgical season of mm-hmm. Advent is just one of the most brilliant things mm-hmm. the church has ever done, especially the God. I, and I, I've mentioned this, who knows how many times, but like the gospels mm-hmm. for these last few days of Advent, like getting you all kind of jazzed up and ready mm-hmm. to go. It's like, you just take it day by day. And we just had the announcement of the birth of John the Baptist mm-hmm. today mm-hmm. in the gospel. It's like, mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> and so that just, we're just going to yeah. go through the, the first chapter of Luke's gospel here and just yeah. love the daily mass readings, getting you ready for the birth of the mm-hmm. Messiah. The so. anticipation grows. It, it does, does really too. Right. In the liturgy. Yeah. You know what tomorrow is? Uh, the 20th. The 20th. The, Gospel is the Annunciation, mm. and the second reading in the Office of Readings is one of my all-time favorites about the whole world waiting for Mary's yes. That's right. Bernard of Clairvaux. That's I can't right. even wait to wake up tomorrow. I'm just going to pop up like, don't wake daddy. <laughs> it's the 20th of December. Woo-woo-woo. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh, the anticipation builds. It oh, It is a really good one. You can do that the night. You know, you can do the Office of Readings you the can. night before, and I'd never do that, but uh, today might. might be the day. <laughs> Today might be the day. Ah, good. Well, he is near. Mm. Prepare your hearts. Yeah. 
We should pray. Let's do yeah. it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your glories. We thank you for the grace that you pour forth into our hearts, into our world. We ask that you may make us worthy vessels to receive all that you want to give us, that you may open our hearts, that you may remove any barriers that we place between your grace and us, and ask that you may guide this podcast and um, it be just simply used for your greater glory. In your name we pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, we are... In the Catechism. In the Catechism, paragraphs 2142 to 2159, the second commandment, the holy name. Yeah, you shall not take the name Mm -hmm. of your Lord, the Lord your God, in Mm -hmm. vain. You have heard that it is said to men of old, you shall not swear falsely, but I say to you, do not swear at all. The second commandment. Okay. And we're going to tackle the entirety of the Catechism's treatment of the second commandment Mm -hmm. here. So, okay, really? Yeah, that's, okay. that's all we got. Okay. Before it's the first and after it's the third. Okay. All right. Nice. Uh, so where are we then in this? <laughs> you need a new catechism. I, I, I you, have a new to... one. Someone gave it me a new one, but all my notes are in this one. Well, how do you need to... How do I get my notes out of this one into a new one? My book is falling apart for you audio listeners. Like it's 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 been on its last thing for a while, but it's really about to. Yeah, like, it's getting worse every time. Yeah. Somehow that's the way it goes. Do you know anybody that can repair books? Oh, that's a good question. Just that's a good question. Maybe if I just put some nice tape there on the binding, that'll what about give glue, it, give it some new life or some glue. Gorilla glue. <laughs> anyway, these back we're to this. Moving on. So we okay. are in the the third part of the catechism. So you know, the first part's the creed. The second part's the sacraments. Third part is morality. The second half of the third part is goes through the Ten Commandments. So we're okay. we're in the yeah. So the morality part is uh, like morality in general, virtues, sins, all that. The second part is the Ten Commandments. Okay. So we're we're on the part on the Ten Commandments. Okay. The second commandment. And this is divided into three different sections. The name of the Lord is holy. Taking the name of the Lord in vain, and then the Christian name, which is a very powerful section too. So beginning, the name of the Lord is holy. The second commandment prescribes respect for the Lord's name. Like the first commandment, it belongs to the virtue of religion, and more particularly, it governs our use of speech in sacred matters. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Governs our speech in sacred matters. Mm -hmm. So think about how do we use our our speech Mm -hmm. in sacred matters? Mm -hmm. Well, not tritely, right? Mm-hmm. Not with without with just like throwing throwing words around, right? Mm-hmm. That our our voices are powerful and they mean something. So it's not like you can just say whatever you want because oh it's it's just words, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, like that old phrase, like you ever heard this sticks and stones can break my bones, but words mm-hmm. will never hurt me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> like I've heard a lot of dumb things, yeah. but that phrase yeah. like because I mean you talk to somebody like years later, mm-hmm. they'll remember the words somebody mm-hmm. says. And, you know, if somebody, you know, mm-hmm. hurts you physically, it's like, ugh, you know, mm-hmm. accidents happen. But they say something mean, it's like, ooh, that one cuts mm-hmm. right through the heart. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's, a, it's a defense mechanism, you know. It's like you try to play big and just like yeah. push down. That didn't hurt me at all, so I'm yeah. just going to ignore it, right. sweep it I'm under tough. the rug. I'm tough. Yeah. That really hurt terribly. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. My son last night, funny story, he got his feelings hurt because we told him it was time for bed. And, you know, that's a very dramatic thing, oh, gosh. right? So How all, could you? all evening, my feelings hurt. Well, geez. Okay, so we get ready for bed, get his jammies on. Like this is like 20, 30 minutes later, and he says, it still hurts a mom. I said, what What hurts? What hurts? My feelings. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> I think I said, yeah, those take a little bit longer to heal than everything else. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do. They do. They do. But anyway, back to, back to the topic at hand. So we have like the first commandment, I, the Lord, am your God. You shall not have other gods besides me. And then the rest are kind of like, okay, here's how you prove that, right? Mm. And here we have this first one of, by how you speak, right? By how you talk about me, right? right? Um, okay, going on. Among all the words of Revelation, there is one which is unique: the revealed name of God. 
God confides his name to those who believe in him. He reveals himself to them in his personal mystery. The gift of a name belongs to the order of trust and intimacy. The Lord's name is holy. For this reason, man must not abuse it. He must keep it in mind in silent, loving adoration. He will not introduce it into his own speech except to bless, praise, and glorify it. That's a beautiful paragraph. It really is. Because mm-hmm. you get back to like the, the book of uh, book of Exodus, mm-hmm. where Moses goes to the burning bush. In the burning bush, he hears the voice of God saying that he's going to go back and free his people from Pharaoh's basically oppression. And Moses is like, well, who should I say is come? You know, who who are you so that I can tell the people when they ask for your name? And then God gives him his name. Mm-hmm. I am who I am. Mm-hmm. And that's the name that, that Moses is uh, Moses is given. So that... Like the fact that God gives his name mm-hmm. is that he, he doesn't want to stay abstract, but like this intimacy that the mm-hmm. catechism talks about, the name belongs to the order of trust and intimacy, mm-hmm. right? And um, it's like on a practical level, I've noticed my dad is really good at like anytime, I, still to this day, anytime we go to the restaurant, like he makes sure he knows the name of the waiter or waitress mm-hmm. and will call the person by that name. Mm-hmm every time. Mm-hmm. And there's just a sense of like trust that builds and like mm-hmm. intimacy and like, not just like, Hey, you're just that servant person who's mm-hmm. taking care of us. He said, you know, whatever, Bill, thanks for that. Or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, Shiloh. I don't, is that somebody's sure. name? Of course yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah. I went to high school with the Shiloh. Yeah. yeah. Shiloh. Thanks so much. Uh-huh. You were great today. Uh-huh. You know, so. And I, we can even get in the habit of doing that, like checking out grocery stores or things like that. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, thanks. Have a good day. Well, thanks, Becky. You know, they yeah. have their names right there. And there is something when someone knows your name that is a profound intimacy and trust. And think about that even yeah. in your relationships. You might know of somebody, but that meeting where you actually exchange names with one mm-hmm. another, like the relationship does change at it that does. point on. It does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, one of our patrons for this podcast is Pope St. John Paul II, mm-hmm. who evidently was just brilliant when it comes to names mm-hmm. and memory. Now, I know there's people, myself included, says, well, like, I'm not I'm just not good with names. Mm-hmm. Let's for all of us myself. I'm talking to myself mostly. Let's mm-hmm. not let that be a cop out sure. for actually getting to know people and mm-hmm. actually caring about somebody enough to get to know their names. Mm-hmm. And like this is like total public declaration of my own faults because there's so many parishioners whose names I wish I knew mm-hmm. that I don't have the courage to say, Hey, I'm sorry. Could you remind me your name? There you go. Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> That's the trick right there. And remembering is just admitting like, and it yeah. takes that ounce of humility to say, I know I should know your name. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I don't remember it, but right. yeah. Right. I run so, into that a lot too. Yeah. Yeah. And if somebody doesn't know our name mm-hmm. to not belittle them, sure. right? Like you don't even know, right? Mm-hmm. Like to, to actually, you know, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, and I've done that, you know, gosh, I've done that. Uh, I remember I, uh, I one time, so I was in Indianapolis at the, the college seminary and the archbishop of Indianapolis was just a very kindly elderly man. You know, he was, he was 75 years old. He was near his retirement age. And I met him on one occasion. And then the second time he said, Oh, you know, so very nice to meet you, Sean. This, and it was the mm-hmm. second time. And I said, well, actually I've, we've met once before. And, mm-hmm. and, as the words were leaving my mouth, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so like condescending to a man who knows, who has to be meeting so many people mm-hmm. and, you know, his memory is not what, whatever, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. so shaming people when they don't know our name. Mm-hmm. Let's not do that. Right, right. Yeah. So again, humility on both sides. That's right. right? Humility right. to admit, I probably should know your name and I don't, I'm so sorry, yeah. but humility when somebody doesn't know to say, hey, not a big deal. <laughs> right. Right. Good. And again, we're talking on like a human perspective on just person to person, what we understand, what we experience. Right. And now imagine that from like God reveals his name to us and what our role is to yeah. honor that, right? And his, just the power of that, because he, of that, he gives yeah. intimacy mm-hmm. and trust mm-hmm. to give us his name. Mm-hmm. And we should not be introducing it into our speech. I love how that's worded, except to bless, praise, and glorify this name. Ah, oh, that's good. The only three reasons to use the name of God, mm-hmm. to bless, to praise, and to glorify. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not to curse, mm-hmm. right? Not to bitterness, not mm-hmm. as an expletive, of course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To bless to praise and to glorify it. And then next, um, we're not quite done with this section here, but what we get into here is ways where we don't do that. Like, Mm. again, like sins against this. So blasphemy, taking false oaths, perjury, things like that are are coming up here in this section. Um, Continuing, respect for his name is an expression of the respect owed to the mystery of God himself and to the whole sacred reality it evokes. The sense of the sacred is part of the virtue of religion. I love that. 
Yeah. So to ha- you just think about like God reveals his name in Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. Jesus is the holy name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And just saying the name of Jesus evokes a sense of the sacred, or at least it ought to, mm-hmm. that when the name of Jesus comes out of our lips or penetrates our ears, mm-hmm. that there should be this sense of drawing us into the mystery of God just by the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And well, that's why we, that's why we have this, it, like it evokes this sense of who he is, his mm-hmm. personhood. Just like if you say the word grandma, all of us go, mm-hmm. our minds go to our grandmothers, but mm-hmm. the sense Jesus, our our minds, our hearts, our our souls go to him. Is there a way, like, do you have practical things that we can do as Christians if we're in a situation where we're where we're hearing the name of God used in ways that are not great? Like, what can we do in terms of acts of reparation or things like that that are loving and genuine and empathetic to our neighbors who perhaps don't know any better, or perhaps mm-hmm. are ignorant or just grew up habitually in an environment where it was just another word to say. Like, what, could we, what can we do to, like there's sometimes it's like, it's so profound, it's it's hard to like even be in the room. But it, mm-hmm. I don't know, but you don't want to be judgmental or, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's all how do we deal with each other's faults. Yeah. True. Right, mm-hmm. so if, you know, and so there's, there's basically baseline, you know, like kind of mm-hmm. things, right? You do it in private before mm-hmm. shaming somebody publicly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you make sure it's not coming out of any sense of, of pride or come off condescending. And mm-hmm. sometimes you can't avoid that, right? Mm-hmm. If you just, anytime you correct somebody, it's going to, who does mm-hmm. that person think mm-hmm. they are, even if it could be the most loving way. Mm-hmm. Um, so first talk, talk to the Lord about it, mm-hmm. right? You see somebody's using whatever, whatever it's like the name of Jesus or it's mm-hmm. GD or something like that. Mm-hmm. Let's first go interiorly and say, Oh Lord, this is, mm-hmm. this is really grinding my gears. Mm-hmm. What do you want me to do about that? Like mm-hmm. first ask the Lord, what do I do about this? Mm-hmm. And if you hear the Lord telling you to like make a public spectacle about it and you know, lambast this person. No, that's probably just yourself. Right. Um, right. right. So <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, private. And if it's just a one-on-one conversation, somebody says that there's, mm-hmm. there's a place to just like, let's pause. Like, could you not do that? Mm-hmm. Or I don't know if that's probably not the way, like maybe just even to mm-hmm. talk about the holiness mm-hmm. of the name of the mm-hmm. Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, and well, sometimes people receive that. Sometimes people don't. Right. And I think too, on our own part, uh, you know, just like understanding a little bit, the holiness of the name will help us. It'll help us too in not having moments where we slip or mm-hmm. where we overlook those things. I guess even if we're in our hearts, when we hear it, we are raising our hearts to God and remembering yeah. him um, for what he's worth. Okay. That's good. Thank you. All, all good things, especially as you know, we prepare for extended family gatherings and things mm-hmm. like that. It seems like virtue is like really tested in those situations, right? We all seems come together. To yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, the faithful should bear witness to the Lord's name by confessing the faith without giving way to fear. Oops. Okay. <laughs> Preaching and catechizing should be permeated with adoration and respect for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Quiz show. Oh no. Okay. What feast do we celebrate on the 3rd of January? Well, I want to say the holy name. Yeah, <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Since that's what we're talking about. Yeah, okay. yeah, that was mm-hmm. a softball. That was kind of. But, but you notice, like, mm-hmm. why does the church put that shortly, like, always in the Christmas season? Mm-hmm. The name comes after a child's born, right? Mm. Sometimes it comes before the child's born, right? Mm-hmm. They told Mary that she was going to name the child Jesus. But then mm-hmm. publicly you have to declare this mm-hmm. baby, the mm-hmm. name mm-hmm. is Jesus. Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. So that's why it's kind of like a Christmas mystery, the holy name Makes of Jesus. Makes sense. So Makes perfect sense. That's why it's sense. January 3rd. Okay. Um, the second commandment forbids the abuse of God's name. Sorry, what? I just thought... Yeah. Uh, I, Father Bob Robeson was in charge of our seminary in mm-hmm. Indianapolis. He's now the pastor of Holy Name of Jesus Parish in wow, Indianapolis. So <laughs> shout out to Father Bob Robeson. Okay. You think he's yeah. listening? Probably not. Um, but shout out nonetheless. But shout out nonetheless. Okay. Um, okay. So the second commandment forbids the abuse of God's name, every improper use of the names of God, Jesus Christ, but also the Virgin Mary and all the saints. Um this, so now we kind of get into that sins against this, right? Promises made to others in God's name engage the divine honor, fidelity, truthfulness, and authority. They must be respected in justice. To be unfaithful to them is to misuse God's name in some way to make God out to be a liar. Okay. Okay. So because the, Jesus is the way, the truth, and mm-hmm. the life, basically if we're making a promise on 
on our Lord. Mm-hmm. He is the truth. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we keep those promises, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. you think about like, um, and we're talking like real, in some ways, huge promises. Mm-hmm. So you think about on your, your wedding day, right? You mm-hmm. made promise, you make promises to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live. And, and that's, that's a promise that you're making before God with the help of God in his church before his minister. That's a serious, serious mm-hmm. promise, right? It's, we're not talking like pinky promises about, mm-hmm. you know, about splitting subway subs or something like that. That's a weird example, <laughs> but like uh, yeah, but we're talking about big promises that, mm. that we make. So. Okay. Okay. So we don't want to set God out to be a liar. Makes sense. Blasphemy is directly opposed to the second commandment. It consists in uttering against God inwardly or outwardly, words of hatred, reproach, or defiance, and speaking ill of God and failing to respect toward him in one's speech and misusing God's name. Um, St. James condemns those who blaspheme that honorable name of Jesus by which you are called. The prohibition of blasphemy extends to language against Christ's church, the saints, and sacred things. It is also blasphemous to make use of God's name to cover up criminal practices, to reduce peoples to servitude, to torture persons or put them to death. The misuse of God's name to commit a crime can provoke others to repudiate religion. Blasphemy is contrary to the respect due God and his holy name. It is in self, uh, itself a grave sin. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... This actually just came out in the media here recently that there was a priest who was removed be- for blasphemous things, which w- it was a uh, forgiving somebody in the confessional with whom he committed a sin against the sixth commandment. So that was a blasphemous thing to basically use the the good name of the Lord and basically as a as a an uttering against God, right? I commit this sin against God with you, and now in His mercy, I'll forgive you, right? It's to basically oh, okay. spit in the face of the Lord. So, oh, okay. um, yeah. So all all sorts of different things to make use of God's name to cover up criminal practices mm. or evil evil practices in any way, right? Like God told me to steal this cookie, so I'm going to do that. Like that's a blasphemous statement that mm-hmm. you taking like permission from God to do something evil. That is, mm. that is a, that's a pretty serious blasphemous statement. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, and actually this happens and not to get too political, but right. People saying, well, God loves whatever, whatever things going on politically, whether mm-hmm. it's abortion, whether it's things related to um, civil recognition of same sex marriages and all those mm-hmm. sorts of things, not to, mm-hmm. um, to, but to say, this is what God wants. Well, that's, that's, an affront to the teachings of God mm. and, and blasphemous, really, mm. according to the catechism's definition of blasphemy. Mm-hmm. blasphemy. Yeah, and that kind of goes back to what we talked about in paragraph 2145, that as faithful, as the faithful, as Christians, mm-hmm. right, we, have, um, we, we need to bear witness to the Lord's name by confessing the faith without giving way to fear. So permeated with adoration, respect for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Basically, we need to understand the teachings. And then, again, it's not like you said earlier when you're talking about how to like be around other people and be virtuous mm-hmm. and be actually a Christian. Um, there's ways to do that without saying, you're wrong, I'm right. And so right. that's just the way it is. But to be loving and merciful, um, but also to not fear and right. to be willing to actually speak what is true. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, we're just, what are we? We're just stewards of God's truth and and yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Humble workers in mm. the Lord's vineyard. That's right. Um, oaths. The last thing in this section, oaths which misuse God's name, though without the intention of blasphemy, show lack of respect for the Lord. The second commandment also forbids magical use of the divine name. Um, now a quote from St. Augustine, I believe. Yeah. God's name is great when spoken with respect for the greatness of his majesty. God's name is holy when said with veneration and fear of offending him. Mm. So that an act of humility there. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's, there's like oaths uh, which misuse God's name without the intention of blasphemy. So basically, um, and, and even like the, the magical use of the God's name. So mm-hmm. if, we, if we invoke God, then this will happen, right? It's like mm-hmm. this magical use is a sense of control, mm-hmm. right? There's, uh, prayer is always, you know, if we're asking God to, um, to whatever, make, make our crops grow, mm-hmm. right? That's imploring his will, but surrendering to him. Mm-hmm. The magical use of God's name would say, if you say this prayer, then this will happen, mm-hmm. right? If you invoke God, then you'll guarantee this result. Mm-hmm. Well, no, that's, that's control. The Lord has ultimate freedom. We simply ask for his assistance. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, along the lines of like superstition and superstitious yeah. prayer and right. um, just something to kind of watch out for. Prayer is meant to kind of transform our hearts. It is not kind of. It's meant to transform our hearts. So the Lord asks us to ask and to tell him we need to know what we're longing mm-hmm. for and what's in our heart, but not with like we own him. Right. Right. Or if you don't you do owe this me. or you owe me yeah. if you don't do Prove this. Prove yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Um, okay, the next few paragraphs, taking the name of the Lord in vain. Talk about false oaths, perjury. We could almost just say, don't yeah. do it. Yep. I mean, yep. we could get into the nitty gritty, yep. but at the end of the day, mm-hmm. um, I, there's some great lines in here, though. A false oath calls on God to be a witness to a lie. Mm-hmm. And then even perjury makes a promise under oath with no intention of keeping it. Mm-hmm. So you think about like somebody promising to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and something else. Mm-hmm. Uh, so how many... So help me God. God right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But with no intention of, mm-hmm. of keeping it and mm-hmm. say, well, I'm about ready to lie in mm-hmm. court or some mm-hmm. other official capacity. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, to sum it up, discretion in calling upon God is allied with a respectful awareness of his presence, which all our assertions either witness or mock. So, again, discretion, remembering, like, if we're going to use his name, mm-hmm. that we do it with veneration, with fear of offending him, with honor, to praise him, to bless him, to glorify him. Um, so to use discretion, yeah, when yeah. we're doing that. Mm-hmm. And then I like this 2155. The holiness of the divine name demands that we neither use it for trivial matters nor take an oath which it, on the basis of the circumstances could not be interpreted as approval of an authority unjustly requiring it. So we don't use it, right? You know, you you don't need to, to swear, uh, you know, to, to make an oath under God's assistance when, you know, you've got to return a pair of you know, a pair of socks to Walmart, Mm -hmm. right? Do you promise that you bought this here, right? So that's a trivial matter, Mm -hmm. right? But giving an oath in a court, well, that's that's a lot more serious Mm -hmm. than, um, you know, did you promise to buy that, that you bought this at Walmart and this is how much you paid for it and all that. Mm -hmm. What about this, this in that same paragraph? When an oath is required by illegitimate civil authorities, it may be refused. It must be refused. When it is required for purposes contrary to the dignity of persons, or to ecclesial communion. So you read about this in times of um, civil unrest, you know, in the history when people mm-hmm. were, you know, again, to just use um, Hitler's reign, you know, in Germany at mm-hmm. that time, and people were asked to take oaths, right? Right. Um, and so, you know, it must be refused when it's required for purposes contrary to the dignity of persons. It's probably happening in the church in China right now, mm-hmm. you know, where you take an oath of fidelity to the, like, Communist Party, mm-hmm. and... Um, and and that's that's your guiding principle as opposed to the church and God's revelation. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. those are issues. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So maybe thank God that we're not at that point mm-hmm. in, in our own lives mm-hmm. where we're asked to do that. Mm-hmm. And if we ever are, that we'll have the courage to to refuse. That's right. That He yeah. grows us in love of Him deep enough that it would take us to the cross. Should that be the case? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, um, the last couple paragraphs, and the Christian name. I love these. This is great. This is great. Yeah. Do you remember not too long ago when we were talking to um, parochial vicar, Father Michael Willick, about the podcast, and he specifically said, I think this is probably the section he was pointing out. He said, hey, when you get to the name section, oh, where yeah. it talks about why why we name our kids. When, and sure. That's really powerful, he said. So shout out to him. Shout out to Father Michael <laughs> right. Willick. He especially likes these few paragraphs. Yeah. Um, the sacrament of baptism is conferred in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, the Lord's name sanctifies man, and the Christian receives his name in the church. This can be the name of a saint, that is, of a disciple who has lived a life of exemplary fidelity to the Lord. The patron saint provides a model of charity. We are assured of his intercession. The baptismal name can also express a Christian mystery or Christian virtue. Parents, sponsors, and the pastor are to see that a name is not given which is foreign to Christian sentiment. So at the like I'm very sorry, is, bottom yeah. is mm-hmm. like are like the low bar to everybody for naming is mm-hmm. to not have anything offensive to the mm-hmm. Christian faith. Mm-hmm. So if you name your child sin, mm-hmm. that that uh, mm-hmm. s- the mm-hmm. child's going to get a different name at baptism. Let's mm-hmm. just say that, or mm-hmm. evil, or mm-hmm. Diablo, or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Right? Mm-hmm. Nothing offensive to the Christian mm-hmm. faith, mm-hmm. bare minimum. Mm-hmm. And then it lays out this ideal about the name given to a child, the name of a saint, or something else of the the Christian mystery or a Christian virtue. Mm-hmm. Right? You have kids named Faith. Mm-hmm. Right? Kids named Grace. Mm-hmm. I've heard of before. Mm-hmm. I've heard of that too. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. D- Julia. Mm-hmm. There, there is a Saint Julia. Mm-hmm. Is there uh, anything about this saint that you are particularly feel the patronage of? Mm, her martyrdom. Her martyrdom. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I think it. Well, there's there's a couple, but the one that um, Julia of Carthage or Julia of Corsica. Either way, she was a Christian, um, but I believe the story is she was like a an assistant to a pagan, might have been mm. the case, um, but very faithful and was very devout in her work and a very faithful worker and servant, and so was very highly respected and was allowed to practice her faith. But then they went to like some pagan ceremony or something, like, and she refused to basically go in. And he was fine with that because he respected her, but whoever was there in charge, did not respect Mm. that. And of course was again, wanting her to make the oath and come and she refused and she was crucified, I believe. Yeah. Sort of fitting for all the rest of this this topic. Right. And I I don't know the years, but, um, but yeah, yeah. And of course that wasn't something until I discovered later, but that's a powerful patron. Yeah. What a great patron. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Right. So the name, right? So if you're if you're listening and you're expecting a child or you might be at some point in your life, a great thing to take the name carefully mm-hmm. um, because the patron is a uh, is the example that this this child gets. Mm-hmm. And um, and so all the different options, right? There's so many saints out there of and so just like a kid or a, a young person thinks about their confirmation saint to think about that in terms for this for the child that you're expecting whether it is a saint whether it's a a, a christian virtue you get a lot of biblical figures i rec- recently baptized a malachi nice yeah one of the minor prophets that's like a great name there's great. another uh, couple who's expecting that is tossing around the idea of job for their son that they're oh, anticipating wow yeah Ooh. Yeah. What do you think that kid's going to have to, you know, nice. the kid's going to like wrestle with things his whole oh, life. Oh, he's going to walk great. the darkness in faith. That's right. That's great. Yeah. Oh, what, so what a great example. Yeah. So, mm. so the biblical figures, mm-hmm. I got a nephew named Nathan, Nathan's mm-hmm. great old mm-hmm. Testament figure. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah. So many. And I mean, you can just like Google Catholic baby names and I bought a book recently actually with it because I was like perusing it in a bookstore and I was looking up all my different patrons, middle name, first mm. name, confirmation name, um, devotional name I took when I made my promises in Carmel. Sure. And in this book, I was finding all of them in, in there and like, okay, what is it about this? And they sure. were all martyrs. Dang. All of them. I'm like, I got powerhouse people praying for me. That's right. I'm like love into the point of death. That's mm-hmm. good. I need that. Um, but anyway, like to just do that, peruse that, even with your own name to really recognize the name that your parents gave you or your middle name or your confirmation name or whatever it right. might be. And I've heard it said too. If you can't find a saint that has your name, good, be the first one. <laughs> right. Somebody's got to be the first. <laughs> right. 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 So that's inspiring too and mm-hmm. encouraging. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, there's a there's a there's a family in the parish that has a, a little one in his name's Athanasius, the hammer of heretics. Mm-hmm. They're little, you know, eighteen month old, maybe two year that old. Is a yeah. It's name. like whoa, mm-hmm. that that's a name and a half mm-hmm. right there. That's, that's real a good. unique Christian name. That's real good. So. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Athanasius Gradwell out there. Mm-hmm. So you imagine like him learning how to spell his name. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. gave my son an easy one. He just <laughs> AJ. <laughs> he just uses the two initials. No, but <laughs> yeah. you think about that. Like even in the the formation of a child, to say you know, like at some point, Athanasius is going to have to ask his parents, like, yeah. what? Right. Where did this name come from? Right. And the parents to be able to like tell the story mm-hmm. of, let me tell you about this great person that you're mm-hmm. named after, mm-hmm. which is just a beautiful mm-hmm. thing, you know, for, for any saint's name. Like you are named after this great person that either gave their life for Christ or they were such an example or showed such incredible charity. Mm-hmm. Like that's a great story to be able to, to be able to tell the kids. Mm-hmm. And like, this is, this is the example of your whole life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even sometimes like as parents, like, like my parents didn't, I highly doubt they knew much about sure. St. Julia when they named me Julia. In fact, I don't think that that went into their decision making at all, but to know how like, God, our names are written in heaven from all sure. eternity. Like God knows like what, what our names are, what mm-hmm. names we're going to be given. And so to really unpack that, it's a beautiful thing to do in prayer with the yeah. Lord when you're really yeah, wanting to fall in love with him. Like he knows who you are and allowing him to let you in on that <laughs> yeah. is a beautiful thing. 
Anyway, okay. I'm going about these names. Forever. I know. It's, I can see why Father Willard likes this part. Uh, yeah, it is it's a great. great. Part. It's great. Um, the Christian begins his day, his prayers, and his activities with the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The baptized person dedicates the day to the glory of God and calls on the Savior's grace, which lets him act in the Spirit as a child of the Father. The sign of the cross strengthens us in temptations and difficulties. Mm hmm. So the sign of the cross being the name of God, being mm-hmm. being enwrapped in the name of mm-hmm. God for the whole day and entrusting all of our day into the name of God, which mm-hmm. is beautiful. It is a beautiful thing yeah. that we do as Catholics. And we, we hear that in Scripture. Whatever you ask in the name, mm-hmm. and my name will be given to you. And that's how we open our prayers, begin our days, close our prayers in his name, the name right. of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And the very first thing that happens to the child in the baptism of a child is you make the sign of the cross on the forehead mm-hmm. of the child. Mm-hmm. That's welcome to the family. Which gets you, it like you now have the cross on your forehead. Which at the very end, in the last paragraph, the very last sentence, it quotes uh, Revelation. Mm. Um, then I looked, and lo, on Mount Zion stood the Lamb, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there, that cross, right? That's right. It's <laughs> good. Um, so God calls each one by name. Everyone's name is sacred. The name is the icon of the person. That's a powerful sentence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It demands respect as a sign of the dignity of the one who bears it. The name one receives is a name for eternity. In the kingdom, the mysterious and unique character of each person marked with God's name will shine forth in splendor. Great. That's our name for eternity, the name that we're given. That's awesome. In our baptism. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Mm Mm-hmm. That's so good. Unless you hate your name. <laughs> no. God will show you the beauty of it in he time, will. I'm sure. Yeah. He will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. Okay. Anything else? That, Sean, Michael, Thomas, yeah. Padre, Wilson. <laughs> in no particular order. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know if everybody knows this, but Sean is basically the Irish form of John. Mm-hmm. So the number of patrons that I get with this name of basically John yeah. is through the roof. It really is. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. I was reminded recently of a nephew who took John as a confirmation name. And I'm like, now hold on, hold on. What John again? What? Yeah. And I'm like, name I on. choose all. <laughs> I choose all. <laughs> Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> yeah. John What's... the Apostle, my feast day. John Vianney, my feast day. John Chrysostom, definitely my feast day. Uh, John of the Cross. You John were going to say him next. I know. John Hughes. <laughs> John Henry Newman. Yeah. All of them. Take them all. That's John so of good. God. Mm. John of Avalon. Right. So God calls each of us by name, quoting Psalm 8, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. So true. So Very beautiful. majestic. Yep. How majestic? Very majestic. Very. Where are we going? Wherever you would like to go. Just docile and flexible and just go. Well, it's going to be Christmas. Is there anything Christmas? Christmassy. <laughs> it's like I pull, you pull back. Is there anything Christmassy? Let's look. Let's see. Let's see. Um, bum, bum. Do we already do like the incarnation? I don't know. Gosh. Uh, we didn't look ahead of time either. I know. We're doing this live. I bet I bet everybody's like playing the Jeopardy theme yep. in their head yep. right now. Yep. Uh, I don't see mm. it. I don't see it. Well, let's just throw something and we'll let the dart lead. That sounds good. Oh. Nope. We've been there. Yep. We done. We, we done there. did that. We did that one. Try again. Try again. I will try again. Thanks for being so kind about it. <laughs> the human virtues. Ooh, ooh 1803 through 1811. Ooh, human that would be virtues. Like a hard one. Or I mean, that was like a hard one on the board to hit. So good job. Well done. Well, you know what we say? One hand throws the dart, right. another hand guides it. That's right. We do say that. St. John Paul II. Pray That's for right. us. Okay, so there are so many, so much beautiful scripture, especially Psalms about like reverence and God's holy name and all of that. Some are quoted in this section, but I'm going to end with um, Psalm 113. So the whole thing, it's a shorter psalm, and then I'm going to read verse 1 and 2 again because it just rounds the prayer out beautifully. Okay with you? Let's do it. All right. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. 
The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forever, from the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.